This all goes back to the thing I've been talking about the whole time subtly. Stop valuing other people's opinions. The reason he said not fully is he didn't go all the way because subconsciously there's a fear that it's not gonna work out. Will this make enough money to sustain, sustain my, like most of the reason people don't go for their dream is because they don't think they'll make enough money to sustain their life. Either their family's too practical or they're insecure. There's too many variables. My big thing is I don't, this is why I want you to hang out, Andre, with a 90 year old. You'll be more scared to not go for it after hanging out with people that literally when I tell you, when you hang out with the 80 to 100 year old set, all you see in their face is regret. You know, you'll see joy and happy, but if you look, if you look for what we're trying to learn from them, of like, what did you do that I can learn from? It's all regret, brother. You will be far more scared to wake up one day and say, why didn't I go for being a piano star? Why wasn't, why didn't I try to be a stand-up comic? You know, why didn't I move to Sweden? Whatever it is, be a cook, be a professional video game player, whatever it is, you will be fearful of that so much more than your sister or your uncle or your spouse or your best friend laughing at you when you stop doing what you're doing and you go for this thing. I get, I'll give you a big one. One thing I talk a ton about that, boy, I can't find anyone talking about this, is if you were in debt or if you're living a life where you're like kind of never getting over the hump, sell your home and go rent a smaller home. Sell your home and go live. The amount of 35 year olds right now that should sell their home or stop paying for their apartment and move back in with their parents is high. They can reset, save some money, have some time with their parents, which I know is like not everyone loves that, but a lot of people would love that. A lot of people do like their parents and would love that, but their pride won't let them do that because everybody will judge them. You sold your house and now you live with your parents? You're a loser. As if that person is living, this is the whole game. So, my man, the reason you're half pregnant is something is stopping you from doing it and I promise you that something is judgment from others. And so, you already know what things you want to do. Gary, I can't find my passion. Yes, you can. Every one of you can tell me what you love most. Mine's the New York Jets, right? So what am I doing? I'm trying to build the biggest businesses in the world so I can buy the Jets and finally win a fucking Super Bowl. But everyone, everyone here knows what they like. They're scared to admit it. There's, there's big ass dudes in here that love ballet. They're scared to say it. We all know. I will never believe anyone that says, I don't know. No, no, you're scared to admit. You're scared to go for it. And so that's what I'm trying to push for. The first one's really interesting. I have this framework that works, and don't forget, I have an agency. That means we get hired by companies and we're trying to tell them what to do. None of our clients do the full thing that I want them to do. They still think running television commercials on network TV is a better way for you to buy something, which is just insane to me. Um, And I tell my team all the time, because they're very frustrated, because we're progressive, I'm like, look, everybody makes the same mistake in the question you're making. They're in the business of convincing. I'm not in the business of convincing. I'm in the business of conviction. I can't convince you up here in 45 minutes. We don't know each other like that. But boy, do I have conviction in everything that came out of my mouth. And for some of you, that might be enough at this moment. Literally today was the only day that some of the things I said are gonna penetrate. There are people who follow me for 10 years and will email me and say, I've heard you say the same thing for 10 years and today was the day which is what keeps me motivated saying the same 13 things 8,000 different ways on every different platform. And so you have to, when you go into your next meeting, don't try to convince them. Have conviction in what you believe. Humans will feel that, right? And you just gotta, right? It's just an everyday thing. It's the same thing, I always think that working out is a great comp for life. Like most people just wanna do eight push-ups and think like it'd be all good. You know, like they just, they don't realize that it's an everyday thing. It's an everyday thing. Like everybody here can be in better shape. Eat healthier and exercise. You know the blueprint, you just, it's hard to do. Everyone's looking for the shortcut. So you just have to keep pushing, keep pushing. And then you have to go into accountability. If you're pushing every day respectfully for three years and it's not happening, 
and it's bothering you like that, well then quit. This is my big thing. Complaining is the worst. Complaining drives me batshit crazy. Especially when you have options. You can't quit because you're getting paid 200,000 a year and your lifestyle, well guess what? Have the humility to get your lifestyle down. If you're so unhappy at work, which is where you spend the majority of your life, then return your Lexus and drive a fucking Dodge. If you're so unhappy, don't go on two vacations that are bougie, do a staycation. If you're so unhappy, Stop buying $5 Starbucks coffee and make your 18 cent coffee at home. You are in control. So, conviction, conviction, conviction. Your boss is driving you crazy. It's never gonna happen. It's eating up your soul. Leave. Cause you can. Two years from pension, three years from retirement, you still can leave. Or eat it because that's your strategy and you want it, but shut your mouth. If you know why you're doing it and you're just eating it for another three years, eat it and stop complaining because you're driving us all down with you. Empathy is having the capacity and compassion to care about other people's feelings. Not caring about other people's opinions is based on being secure in your own skin and not valuing judgment. They're very, very easy to balance, though the question's absolutely right. It's all emotional frameworks. For me, It's the game of being selfless and being selfish. You know, for me, having compassion and empathy, like it's even the entire speaking style I have right now. Like to me, I sit here and I'm just literally in real time right now, what can I say that will bring value? What can I say that will bring value? What can I say that brings value? As far as, I've also cursed four times, sir. I know there's people in here that don't like that. I respect that, I'm actually empathetic to that. If you grew up in a household or were taught a certain way where that's a horrible thing, you're not gonna like that. I grew up in Jersey, so, you know, <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little hard for me to contain it, but I'm empathetic to the judgment. On the flip side, I'm also aware that I'm okay with that judgment because if that's what you took out of this talk, We've gotta work on all the things we're talking about here to level up the consciousness. So I think it's, I think it's very balanceable. I think that they're just both very hard. They're, you know, this is, four, this is 40 years of practice. One of the great things that happened to me, parents that have poor students, let me give you an insight that's left field, truly not being talked about. What allowed me to be who I am is that I got poor grades and every teacher and every friend's parent told me I'd be a loser, but I knew I wasn't. I knew I wasn't because I made more money than everyone selling lemonade. I knew I wasn't because when it snowed, I got a shovel and rang every doorbell. I knew I wasn't because the world was telling me the truth, not the systems. And so I got practice. A lot of parents reinforce school. Yeah, you're, you, this is bad. Without realizing school has no impact on someone's truth in life. And so we need to think about those things. And I just got a lot of practice of tuning out the noise because the noise was telling me one thing, but I was living another. I'll give you another one. The greatest thing I wish on everyone besides health is living the first 10 years of their life in a household that's extremely happy with very little money. That was mine. Because I was brought up in a way where I realized very quickly, oh, money has no impact on happiness. I grew up the happiest little boy on earth. We had nothing. I wish that on everybody because you you get conditioned. You understand. And so I think a lot about these things. It's practicing, it's emotional practice. Emotional practice. We talk about physical practice. We don't talk about emotional practice. So I, would, I, would, I think it comes down to practicing. Like truly having a bad day where people are throwing judgment at you and just like knowing yourself enough to be like, I'm just gonna go golf because that's what helps me or I'm gonna watch sports because that's what helps me or you know, I'm gonna listen to music. Like practice. That's what I do. Every time I'm having a struggle, I push myself into something that gives me escapism from that struggle. I'm getting conditioned and we need more emotional practice.